Last week when I was making that spice rack, I decided I had to come up with a better idea for, um, you know, putting a stop on the saw for long cutoffs uh, than those pieces of wood that I clamp on all the time. So uh, this video is about just making a um, saw stop that kind of saw stores in the saw fence itself. So I started out with a piece of, I had a block of UHMW polyethylene that was about the right size. And you can see I had to take one little cut on it with the bandsaw to um, to make it so it would fit in the opening of the fence and then I just took it in my drill press and drilled a hole for a three-quarter of an inch hole and I had a piece of four foot long stainless steel tubing that was real nice straight and a fairly thick wall so I decided that I would be using that for this project so after I drilled the hole I went back and I actually, you can see I'm splitting the block there so that I can create a clamp to lock it in place. You need the long plastic block to guide it and then this clamp will lock it. And uh, this operation here, probably uh, you should do it with a router or something. I did it with my table saw to just try to split that clamp. Um, I press fit a piece of wood in there and you know there it is and there I just have the um you know I have that guiding hole and then I just have a clamp on it so nothing will move around and then I just cross drill the hole to add some hardware later now this block actually could probably be made out of um you know wood or you know any kind of plastic that you could get your hands on it would even be a great candidate for a 3d uh, print job so next I went over to the saw fence and uh, marked off a couple of holes and um, here just putting a center prick punch in there for the holes and then um, you know, I drilled a couple of holes so I could put some mounting screws in to keep this uh, whole unit from sliding around. Um, you know, so it was just I probably messed up the warranty on my saw at this point but um, I really don't care. So there it is. There's uh, what it looks like with the clamp and everything. And it's a fairly tight fit going into the fence. So, um, you know, basically I put that knob on the bottom there so that you can uh, just lock it from moving around. And like I said, it's pretty tight fit going in there. So I just, uh, you know, tapped it in with a dead blow hammer. And then I went back with a pilot bit for the uh, screws I decided to use in there and then I just um, you know with this UHMW it's uh, you know it takes any kind of a screw like a piece of wood so I just had some sheet metal screws that I put in to hold everything in place and keep it keeping it from you know basically moving around at a later time hopefully someday I'll be able to get my hands on one of those uh, 3d printers and be able to come up with you know something that's a little bit fancier and uh, you know looks a little better but um, you know for now this uh, this seems like it's gonna work out really good um, I had that piece of three-quarter inch stainless steel tubing and I just took that over to my buffer just to um, you know how they imprint the name names and size and stuff on it so um, I just cleaned that up a little bit and this is a real stiff rigid piece of tubing it's like a sixteenth of an inch wall so um, you know you could even use like a solid rod of aluminum or something but uh, you know with that cleaned up I kind of slid it in there and it's a real tight fit um, I didn't want it to wiggle around so I did make it a, a tight fit on the plastic and then I just had a block of ash that I had left over from another project. I just went back and I cut that to, you know, approximately the size that I wanted. And then I took that over to my drill press and I drilled a three quarter inch hole to match the, uh, the diameter, the outer diameter of that piece of tubing. And then I set it up on that little uh, tenoning jig to just go back and split it so I'd have a split clamp there. So, you know, everything would just kind of be easy to to put together and take apart later if I had to. So it's kind of, you know, what it looks like and how it's going to uh, work in the future. So next I just had to um, drill a couple cross drilled holes in there and allow me to put a couple of carriage bolts up from the bottom there so I could, um, you know, tighten that clamp on the, the uh, sh that piece of stainless steel tubing to locate that in place. And then I decided just to, um, 
you know, go back and take a little bit of the extra meat off of it that I really didn't need. So, yeah, I just went over to my band saw and drew a couple lines on on there and just trimmed it back to them. Now this is, you know, just sort of the idea that I had for, you know, making a stop and it could be adapted basically to any materials that you have and, um, you know, any kind of a tubing that you have or telescopic pipe or anything like that, you know, could easily be made to work with this. So once I got that trimmed up, I went back and drilled two half inch holes for the, um, for the other stops. And the first one is drilled near the edge, and that's going to have another split clamp on it just to, um, you know, hold another uh, stop that's easily adjustable. And then the second one there, I'm going to put a threaded insert in just so that I have a, um, a uh, carriage bolt that's kind of like a fine adjust clamp if I want to tweak it just a little bit. So, you know, there are the holes drilled, and there's that insert I'm putting in. And I, what I do to put the inserts in is I just get a piece of threaded rod, screw it into the insert, and just use a nut with a wrench like that just to, um, you know, just to screw it down into the wood because, you know, they can take a little bit of force to get these things into a piece of ash. So you just uh, screw it in, and then once you get it screwed in, you um, back that nut off a little bit and just unthread it all, and the insert stays right in place. And, you know, having that long shaft on it helps you to get it aligned straight. Then I went back, took a little trim router with an eighth-inch uh, bit on it, just went back and, you know, trimmed around all the edges so there'd be no sharp corners or anything like that. And... Um, and I just went back and I I did a good sanding on all of it and um, then I took a um, just a quick spray coat of a clear rust-oleum um, finish and I put a couple coats of that on there quick that real fast drying stuff just to protect it and there it is you know basically all done uh, a couple carriage bolts are pressed in the bottom there and then I have uh, some little plastic knobbies that I had left over from another job so I figured I'd use them here and um, I put two of them on the bottom clamp and one on that top clamp there and it was just a carriage bolt threaded in and then there's a piece of uh, half inch OD stainless steel tubing I had and that has a nylon head uh, bolt pressed in it just to be my stop so you know there it is it's a pretty snug fit you just I just pushed it on there until everything was, um, until the tubing was flush on the back side. And then you tighten those two knobs there and it clamps real good. I mean, you could use just nuts or bolts if you want to. It's, and then, um, you know, this is basically how it's going to look. That bolt on the bottom, actually, if you look at that knob on the bottom there, um, that you loosen that up and it allows you to slide the, uh, slide this stop out or slide it back in and you just tighten that up to keep it in place um, and I made it with this one longer stop so I could go all the way back to the miter gauge there like you see you know to, to stop for short cuts and um, then it's also I put two stops on there so that you can have um, you know the one stop for um, the first side of a let's say a tenion cut or, or a cross lap cut and then the second stop to you know move over with the dado blade and do the second one and you can just loosen it up and swing it down out of the way and you know it's basically not in the way at all when you look at it and you know that's kind of kind of what it looks like how it's going to work and um you know, I think this will really help. My last saw had a sliding table on it with a big long fence that um, I really missed. But I think this really will uh, fill in for that in the long run. Plus, you really don't have anything exposed. Now, there you can see it will pull out over to about four foot length or just a little bit under four foot. But um, I found out that the tubing gets a little bit rubbery for that length. So um, up to about three foot, it's really good. And um, has no flex in it and you know it's just easy to swing out of the way like you see there 
just uh, you know clamp everything down and you can also um, pull it out and just slide it in under the table way up under there if you um, you know you want to hide it pretty much all of it out of the way so I just you know thought this was a um, a good way to allow me to do repetitive cuts with the uh, miter gauge and um, you know I just thought I'd share the idea with you and it's nice that that shop fox fence has a uh, hollow in it that you can hide the tube right in and um, you know so this is just just my idea for making a stop for it and you know something like this should work for any shop fox type fence here with that um, hollow tube in it thanks for watching please subscribe